Okay. Can you explain this first one here? Uh, yes, this first one has to do with um, uh, using the Swift UI previews. Um, yeah. I yeah. think whenever you know we want to to use a powerful previews, which I really like for for the quick feedback, um, but in the the view model that I have, um, the view model gets instantiated with a loader. And of course, a loader requires another dependency. And so that chain of dependencies to get to the point where the view model can be created becomes a little bit uh, of an issue, I think, for testability here in the, in the, in the uh, Swift previews. Right. So we have a Swift UI view that depends on a view model and the view model depends on a loader. Do you have a loader? Yes. Yes. University remote loader and these loader also has dependencies and so on and so on. Yes. But at some point here, you would have a protocol, right? Or a class that you can subclass some kind of polymorphic interface. That's it. Okay. So the loader is a protocol, right? Mm -hmm. One way you can do it is to create another subclass for testing purposes or preview purposes. Yeah, exactly. A preview loader. And here you already provide completion with whatever data you need. What is the data? Old couldn't find the type. Ray University. Is that it? Yes. You need the yeah. result, result, right? Yeah. yeah. Here you can complete with whatever you want. University ID. What is necessary here for this view? Anything? Um, the, the, I think it's the country and I believe it's the name. I think that's all. The name, everything that is not needed, we don't need to provide, right? Necessary details. Yeah. The country. Is this HTTP ever? Is it in a different module? It's in the the shared API module. Yes. Uh -huh. So we need to import shared API module. Hmm. Just for testing the preview, we need to import a module. And this is a success. Yeah. So instead of providing a real university remote loader, you can just provide the preview loader. It already has whatever data you need. We need to return. Oh, we need to return a task. Well, we can return Neil because yeah. it's optional. Yeah. Yeah, but this API is now exposing details that maybe you shouldn't, right? Makes yeah. the mocking here harder. But I think now it would work, the preview, without actually creating all the dependencies. And even the dependencies of the uh, remote loader changes, you don't need to change the preview, right? Because this preview is isolated. As long as you don't change the interface here, the loader protocol, you're safe. What is wrong here? Okay. Do we have a build error somewhere? Or is it just Xcode being Xcode? <laughs> so this is one way you can do it. You will implement that interface in a private class inside your preview. And you can provide whatever details you want here, you need to test your 
preview. I don't know okay. what's going on with Xcode here. Oh, there it is. Just took forever. Okay, so I think the the loader class does have a, a method that needs to be called. How do you call this method? Um, that uh, I think what I do is I actually call that before I create or upon creation of the view model out in in the class outside of here. Whenever this this Swift UI view is being created and being added, that's whenever I, I call it. And how does the view model get the right, all these right fetch there. units? These fetch here. units, yes. Okay. So I guess here in the preview we can do something like on here <laughs> and then call the method in there. Okay. Yeah, so or you can do the view model view model dot fetch. It's the name doesn't matter, right? No. For this test, and then you pass the view model here. And you return. There you go. Now you can provide whatever mock data you want for your previews. Okay. In other country, I got the feedback and it's pretty fast. Yeah. In other name. This is one way you can do it. If you have a polymorphic interface in the middle here, then you can just provide your own implementation with in providing whatever data you want to test here. Okay. Yeah, that's that's great. That's really nice. Now there's another way you can do it as well. When you design your views, you can design a view like this that will have the dependency view model. You can have like a university list view. We will only have the list of items directly. Universities. University. So let's see. Make sense? Did you create a Standalone view that you can test in isolation. Mm -hmm. You can put in the preview here without any dependencies. So in your preview, you will preview the list already with the specific universities you want. Okay. So just bypass the view model because that has all of the, the dependencies in it. Yes. Make sense? Mm -hmm. You also need to provide this own university tab, but it do nothing, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's it. So you can preview it without any other dependencies. And then you can have a container view that will combine the view model with that list. Oh, I see. Here you will pass the, what is it called? Uni model. Uni model dot universities. So you still maintain the, the observed um, variable, but it just passes it to the, the view. 
That's yes. Well, yeah. So the actual view that does the rendering is just pure data. So you can create this view at any point without any dependency. You just need to pass the data it needs. But at some point you need to use this and combine it with a view model. Then you use composition and you create another view that will contain that. And this is more open as well because now you can test this application without a view model. You can create a preview without a view model. You can also create a standalone application that you can send to your clients without a view model talking to a backend. So they can play and demo the project, you know, with a specific data that you can provide at compile time. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so really you separate nice. the data from the view model. And then you have just a, a tiny container view that will compose the view model with that view. Okay. That's it. Yeah. And maybe here you would like when there's a selection, you will call the view model to do something. Maybe binding with the view model you can do in a separate view. So two ways you can do it. I find this one easier to manage because what happens is that if you start creating your own implementation for protocols in previews, at some point you need to change that interface because there's a new requirement. And now you need to update all your previews. <laughs> and also you don't have to import the shared API here. Yes. So what are you doing here? You're, you're checking the layout, right? Mm -hmm. The view model you will test with unit tests is in a separate target. So you don't need to have a view model here to test the UI. Test only the UI, the, the visuals here with the preview. And you test the view model behavior with unit tests. Okay. Yeah. I can see that now. Yeah. That's way easier. <laughs> and you don't need a shared API. <laughs> well, there's a dependency. Well, 